Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. And today I'm not gonna show you a Photoshop or photography tutorial, which you're normally used to. Today I'm gonna show you something that's just as important, and it seems to be one of those things that we just glance over and overlook, and that's the idea of space and size. As a photographer, things take up a lot of space. Not just the images that we edit and the ones that we bring in, but the PSD files that we're left with, with all of our layers, can all be very heavy on our computers. And it can be very difficult to get a visual representation of what is happening to that drive that we have our stuff stored. So in today's tutorial, I'm gonna go over a program that I use to find exactly how big my images are and where they are taking up the most space on my drives. All right, so I'm gonna be showing you a program called Tree Size. Tree Size is for Windows users only. I know, I'm sorry, I apologize, but it's something that I use because I am a Windows guy. Why am I apologizing for that? Anyway, don't throw rocks at me just yet because there is a program out there called Daisy Disk for Macs. And Daisy Disk is essentially the same thing that I use uh, for Tree Size, but it's specifically for Mac users. It's only 10 bucks. It's probably the best 10 bucks you'll ever spend as a Mac user. Tree Size, I think, is like $30 or something like that, but either way, it's worth it. And why is it worth it? Well, it's worth it because these programs are designed to assess your drives and give you a visual representation of how much space your photos are taking up on your drive. It's pretty simple. For me, my G drive is the drive that I use for my pictures, the archived pictures. So I'm gonna go ahead and press play on this and that's basically going to uh, do an assessment of that drive. It's gonna show me in a pie chart what folders in my G drive are taking up the most space. And I love this because when I look at this, I see that my drive is at 100%. And of that 100%, 40% of that, almost 40% of that is being taken up by my pictures archive. So if I expand this folder here and click on the pictures archive, the pie chart now changes. And it shows me of that G drive in my pictures archive, the year 2016 at 19.8% is taking up the most space in that drive. So if I click on this folder and open it up, it then shows me that of that 19.8%, 40% of that folder is coming from Yosemite. So all the images that I shot in Yosemite are the biggest chunk of images or of space that's being taken up in that 2016 folder. If I open up that Yosemite folder, Look at this, it now shows me what folder inside that Yosemite folder is taking up the most space, and that's from Glacier Point. So if I open up that Glacier Point fo folder, it's saying that 34%, or for almost 35%, of that Glacier Point folder is being taken up by processed photos or more than likely PSD files. I can show you how to find that out in a second. So if we click on this Yosemite folder, this is really important. I don't use Lightroom. I don't plan on, I never intend to. So the way I store my images is very much like this. You'll see it's broken down by year and then date and then where I shot and what I shot while I was in that year and date. It's very much like a tagging system that you would use in Lightroom, but I use Bridge uh, and I use uh, Windows to basically catalog my stuff. It's something I've been doing since 2006 and I do not intend on changing it. You're not gonna change my posture. I've had plenty of people tell me that I need to start using Lightroom, but I don't care to. Will this help you if you use Lightroom? I don't know, because I don't even have the program installed. But what I'm showing you here is that I have a lot of control over everything on my computer. This is telling me that maybe these Glacier Point photos Maybe they need to be culled a little bit because you've got a lot going on. This is just based on the chart. Now, if I go to the details, this will show me in that Glacier Point folder just how much space all of the stuff is taking up in here. So each one of these raw files is taking up three tenths of a percent of space in this area. And from what I gather here, this is probably a folder that I haven't culled. This is telling me, hey Blake, red flags dude, you need to go into this Glacier Point folder and cut some of the crap. You probably don't need all those brackets, you probably don't need all those shots that you took that we know are just you moving your camera a tenth of an inch because you wanna get a little bit better composition. So you need to go through and you need to cull those things. If we go over by extensions, this shows me that of this folder, these graphic files are taking up the most space. These graphic files being ARWs, my raw files are taking up 8.8 .8 gigabytes of that 14.4. So now I'm starting to get down to them. Like, okay, yes, 
of the things that are in the issue in this Glacier Point folder, Blake, you definitely need to go in here and you need to start calling some of this stuff. If you go to users, this will tell you uh, who the user is that is using the most of this area. I'm the only user on my computer, so it's only going to be me. If you go to age of files, this is interesting. It'll say of that, only a, a couple of them have been used from uh, one month to six months, meaning I probably opened it and edited it and saved it for a tutorial or something like that. So most of the stuff in there is over two years old and I haven't touched it. So that means I can probably successfully put that onto my external drive or many, one of my many external drives and just store it away because I'm probably not going to go back to this folder. And that can free up some space on the local drives that I have here on my PC. Now I've got a very unique way in how I handle uh, my backing up. I have my main C drive that only has stuff from this current year in it. I take my pictures archive, which is on my G drive that archives anything from 2006 through 2017 with 2018 remaining on the C drive. And then I also take any of my backup stuff and even the stuff that's on my C drive. And once a month, I back it up to an external drive. So I always have some form of backup going on at any given time. I even have some cloud services that I use to back up the stuff, but really I haven't had a chance to even need to use them. They're just for insurance purposes only. But what I want you to gather from this is that there's a lot that we can see in this tree size program. If we go back to our G drive here and we just go ahead and go close out 2016, let's look at 2017. Here we're looking at the age of the files in the year 2017. Here's the chart from the year 2017. Here's the details from the year 2017, all the different days that I shot and how much of the drive they're taking up right here. So I can see that this sandstone arch, that is my biggest one. Maybe I need to open that up and go through and cull some of those things. Looking at the amount of raw files here, looking at the extensions and the amount of raw files, you're darn right. 15.5 gigabytes of that 17.4 gigs is raw files. That's a lot of raw files. Now I'm not saying that you need to delete your raw files. What I'm saying here is that there's probably some crap in there that I could cull out because we know that we aren't taking our best photos all the time. There's probably even some blurry photos there. There's probably some brackets that are overexposed or underexposed. There's some things that I can clean up there. If looking at this stuff by percentage isn't really your cup of tea over here, if we go back to our view over here, you can change that from percent to the number of files or the allocated space on that drive. So instead of looking at it as percentage, you can see the PIX archive is taking up 885 gigabytes worth of space just in that pictures archive, which is a little bit different than looking at things in, in the form of percentages. We look in the in form of percentage, well, 40% of what? Well, when you look at allocated space, it tells you exactly what that is. We can change this to terabytes, we can change it to megabytes or kilobytes or even byte bytes. That's a lot of byte bytes. Uh, gigabytes is probably a good thing to put it at for us as photographers. There's all kinds of things that are listed in here, but I really don't want to give you a tutorial on how to use tree size or Daisy disc for that matter. What I really wanted to show you here was that as a photographer, the act of going out and shooting is important, but it's just as important to come back, call your photos and make sure you have room to add more stuff in the future. A simple tool like this can save you a lot of money because you might be thinking, well, you know, I need to buy a bigger drive. And then you go out and spend two or $300 on an external hard drive. That's, that's even a low price just to find out that if you just would have gone through and culled some of your crap and stopped hoarding all of your pictures, you wouldn't have to run out and make that $400 purchase. Do I do this all the time? No, I, this is an assessment that I do probably once a year and I just so happen to be doing it here in August. So I wanted to show you this again, if you're not a PC user and you want an alternative Daisy disc for Mac, will do something very similar. If not the exact same thing, it might even have more options for you. Again, my name is Blake Rudis. If you like this tutorial, please comment on it, like it, share it, tell a friend. If you haven't done so already, subscribe and click the little bell that's next to there. So anytime I create a new tutorial, you get a notification for it. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it.